Quick and easy, huh? <laughs> this one's going to be quick, easy, painless. Why I do you say that? that? Well, I don't think we have very long topics to discuss. Each of them will take probably less than 10 minutes, I think. Except movies of the week, which might go a little longer. Classic. Yeah. Normally does yeah. go a little long. Yeah. So I'll say yeah. maybe this one, I'm predicting it'll be about 45 altogether. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. Editor. We'll see. About start, that, start that timer. Well, it's started. It's, it's going. If it's going, we should. Housekeeping. I guess so. Oh, hey, first everyone. of all, first yeah, yeah, of all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we got to introduce ourselves. That is true. Welcome to the <laughs> podcast episode 56. I'm Jeremy Van Suarez. I'm Logan Riley Bruner. And I'm Jacob Wade. Let's get to it, shall we? I'll do the housekeeping. Dusty, dusty. Dusty, dusty. dusty, 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 dusty yeah. Yeah. <sighs> well, the interviews press on. Mm -hmm. We've gotten uh, two more interviews complete in the yes. last week. Yeah. You can check out the interviews that we have been releasing as the weeks go on. They're on our YouTube page. There are some clips on our Instagram and our TikTok for you, so check those out. Check that clock app out. There's some good editing going on there, I yeah. will say. That's true. Yeah, I'm proud of our TikTok. Like our some TikTok. funny fun. moments. Fun. Yeah, we highlights. Some good highlights. So definitely check us out over there. Share our content with your friends and continue to support Black Wolf's Productions. We love you. What else is going on, guys? We are moving forward with another short uh, film. Hopefully filming like next week. Hopefully filming like next week. Wow. We start, and we start rehearsals this week. Yeah. We start for rehearsals this week for, for, a, a for a web series that we're working on. If you want to learn about that web series, you can go watch one of our past podcasts where we talked to Susanna Scorcia. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. I Press it. Find it. Go. Where is it? So excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah, I like a little cheer at the end. Yeah, <laughs> we've got good stuff coming along. Um, I think that's about it. There's not much else that we have to really dust off, do we? You're not just wrong. You're stupid. Take it uh, away. We had uh, a very special birthday. Uh, for us, it's tomorrow. Uh, but Motherfucker, dude! This is dude. not how you celebrate This is not how you celebrate a birthday! <laughs> how do you celebrate a birthday, then? You say, hey, Jacob, isn't it your birthday tomorrow? And I say, yeah. Right now, it's my birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Jacob! Thank Happy birthday. you. You're a quarter of a century old, and you couldn't be any hotter. Quarter of a uh, century, that's man! That's a lie. You could be. I know. I'm past my prime. No! <laughs> what? I didn't say that. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, by the time you're listening to this, I'm 25 years old, and it's not too late. You can still text me about it and wish me a happy birthday. <laughs> Now, Thank you. Jacob, what's the most important lesson you learned from your 24th year? Oh, goodness. From my 24th year? Yeah. My goodness. We talked about this a little bit in your interview. Yeah. Yeah. That's I did. Cool. But just, it doesn't have to be, you know, strictly towards the arts. It can just, like, life or something stupid. I don't know. Hmm. Take it one day at a time. And put yourself out there every day. I love that. You know? Happy birthday, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think that the time is just, it's just moving forward. And we don't have any more of that time to just, to waste, you know? We can we can spend all the time we want, but let's not waste yeah, it. Because before you know it, you are out of time. Jeez, you know? don't you know it. So make the most of it every single day. I know. Yeah. I'd like to shout out Santiago. It, Today's it, his today birthday. The day that we're is recording his birthday. This. I've been keeping him in my thoughts and thinking about him all day. For sure. He would have been 25 today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we love you, buddy. That's all I got to say. another joint birthday. Yeah. It's all mine. <laughs> yeah. Makes it sound like you, like, claimed the spot. You were I, like, it I can claim. only be for me. It's <laughs> only my birthday. It's no one else's. No, I actually share a birthday with a lot of people. Yeah. Including my mother. Fun fact. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, I wait, Let me It's also my that. mom's birthday. I keep forgetting that. Yeah, there, we, that. there we go. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people do. It's not one of those things that comes around often that yeah. people are like, you know. You don't You're brag not about it. Yeah, I'm you know. not, no. Me and my mom have the same birthday. <laughs> we're at the hip and we're doing things together. <laughs> no. It's, uh, we, we, I'm going to have some separate plans from my mom. This year. What are you planning to do for your birthday, Jacob? 
Really? <laughs> Honestly, I'm not really planning on doing anything. I was thinking about putting together like a birthday lunch and inviting like everyone who I want to see Ooh. to just come out and have lunch with me. Mm-hmm. But you better hurry. It's I know. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, like people will be busy. There are some people who are not in town. Like. I'd have to pay for the whole thing. Like, it's just yeah. like, yeah, like, I feel like birthday, it's the opposite. Everyone else pays for you. I could, but then I don't want to like create like a plan and have people be like, oh, I guess I got to pay for this. You know, yeah, especially like, at hey such man. like last note, like last notice. Is it last notice? What's it called? Last, last minute. minute. Last minute. Last minute. Notice. Short notice. Short, Short notice. notice. Short notice. Last minute. Same thing. I'm just going to, I don't know. See. I'm going to keep it chill. You and have then something you, planned. Something's planned. Uh, Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. I don't know what's going on. You guys know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. So I'll find out what's going on. And in the next podcast, we'll talk all about it. Yes. Okay? Or editor, you'll like drop in a photo right here of what we did. Yeah, that's not necessary. <laughs> so. <laughs> so much fun. We had so much fun. I'm sure we did. <laughs> Living in the future. I you know me. I can't do it. Can we just live in the present, guys? Can we just live in the present? Let's live in the present. Let's live in the present. Let's live in the present. Let's be present. Two votes to one, Logan. We're living the... in the present. Yeah. Okay. Final, final decree. It's been decided. So, but we're gonna live in the past for a little bit because last week, so wrong. We made some predictions <laughs> so about the Bahrain Grand Prix Are we doing Formula the same thing One for Saudi? 2022. Uh, I don't know. I just want to <laughs> discuss because it was. A... Well, I think we don't even need to discuss because they saw live. How our predictions went. How we don't really we need to recap because yeah. they saw it. It was just you know we were wrong. It was a, except it was for Ferrari and Max Verstappen not finishing. You were right about that. I was right. No, about that. you were right about that. Prediction. I said yeah. Verstappen. You said uh, I said what you think Max is gonna and which uh, is drink too much Red Bull. Which he isn't didn't. exactly. No, it wasn't no, his no. fault. No, no, no. You know, engine failure amongst both Red Bull teams. Yeah, hopefully. They have that fixed, cause it's your fixed. I know, I know, I know. Um, surprisingly, for me, Williams was doing a good job. I saw them like midfield the pretty much the entire race. So poor, Mac- poor McLaren. Haas too. Yeah, good for He's Kevin Magnussen. Five. A fucking Viking comeback. Good for Haas getting points on the first race. That's something that we didn't see all last year. Basically, I so. hope they keep it up. Or the year before. Okay. Yeah, it was so. always like, I think even when it was Grosjean and uh, they were pretty low tier. It was Williams and Haas fighting for last. Grosjean place was like yeah. fighting we... for ninth and then crashing. Was there the we reason go. that uh, Kimi was not a huge Roman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fan. So looking forward this season, I'm well, now I'm predicting that Ferrari is going to be like top dogs. I think through like I mean they've been consistent like. Today, you told me Charles got P1 in all three all qualifying three practices, so, practices and so. qualifying just ended. I don't want to lie. No, I think qualifying. Oh, oh no, it's qualifying's today. It's today. Jeez. Live. Do we have our grid? Oh, it's my boy. phone. Uh, it's behind your computer. Let's Indeed. check out the quali. Yeah. yeah, let's see what our let's grid what is. Got. But yeah, so my prediction is that uh, Ferrari's going to be the top the dogs. Because the website was. Does it, Does it matter? I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Would you like to hear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, Leclerc one. Wait, 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 wait. That's my boy. That's my boy. Verstappen two. Yeah. Perez. That's my boy. Perez three. That's my boy. Sainz four. That's my boy. Bottas five. That's my boy. We are right. Right. <laughs> Uh, Alcon six. Oh my God! Where's That's the Mercedes? <laughs> uh, Gasly seven. <laughs> Oh it's no! Magnus and eight. What the it's fuck? Alonso nine. Where's the Mercedes? Sonoda <laughs> ten. What is going on? Lewis Hamilton eleven. Oh my goodness! Nick Schumacher twelve. Is it Joe or Zhao? We were mispronouncing Joe. it for so long. Joe. Joe. Joe at thirteen. Russell fourteen. Son. Stroll 15. Damn, son. Daniel Ricardo 16. Damn, oh. son. Alex Albon 17. Damn, son. Hulkenberg 18. Damn, son. Bag. Lando Norris 19. Damn, son. Nicholas Latifi 20. Wow. <laughs> so, what are our predictions? What for is going the on? Saudi race. My, my predictions, I mean, Ferrari, Ferrari and Red Bull. And uh, Red Bull. I don't know. Uh, is, I'm, I'm, they did well, a great quality. Yeah, we'll see if the engine can last for Red Bull. Yeah, if the engine gets to the end. Yeah, because Gasly's blew up. Yeah, and then Verstappen. It went on fire. It didn't 
blow up. Mm-hmm. And it caught fire. It overheated. Extreme. Let's say that. Badly. Extreme. So let's see. Let's say we hope that they have the stamina. Yeah. To make stamina. it. To make it through. Maybe a little less Red Bull, a little more five-hour energy. <sighs> what well, is I mean, going actually, on yeah. Mercedes. I guess. Then bring you out as quickly. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think their I think their engines just not up to snuff. I think because uh, McLaren's also not doing good. They're they bouncing a lot. Engine. Yeah. Like I've seen it. They're like driving and they're like, <laughs> like that's that no sucks. Stability. They yeah. have no stability and they can't put the car higher because then they lose it. the speed and it's just not it. Lewis is Lewis is good at 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 overtaking though. I suspect he'll be in the points. Me too. Yeah. But to not even get you think to he'll P get P three with one? the two Ferraris top again? Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, we've, I he's got to get past quite a few people. Yeah, but yeah. some of those people you can get past. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. Alonso's going to be tough because Alonso's always a challenge. Yeah, for Lewis. Once, once you start getting to to the Red Bulls and the and the Ferraris, then it gets a little tough. But I definitely think he can end up in the points. I think he'll end up in the points. I'm just talking like. In his pursuit to get to the Red Bulls and the Ferraris, like we saw in, um, oh, Bahrain. what was that? No. Uh, there was a really amazing race last year where Ocon won. Monza. No. <laughs> uh, whichever race Ocon won, uh, Alonso kept Hamilton behind him for like seven or eight laps. Which everyone oh, was like, yeah. oh, Alonso, he's going to get past Alonso right away. And then Alonso was like, no, you're not. Yeah. No, you're Good not. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Keep like, up a good that fight. guy still likes to fight. Put up a good fight. He's ready to brawl. Yeah. And final predictions. Interested. Final predictions. Leclerc wins again. Leclerc. 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 Max. P one and P two. All right. Well, I All think right. so. I think Carlos. P two. P two. I'm worried about Red Bull's engine. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I don't know that I'd put them top three. I hope Charles wins. That's my my guess going into it. This is my boy! But I would not be surprised if something went really, really wrong. Oh, yeah. It's a street race. In lap one of this particular It's a street race. circuit. It's a yeah. fast street circuit, And it's too. the fastest street circuit yeah. there is. Last week, we had a circuit that's a lot of curves, a lot of turning. A Classic. Lot, not a lot of space to overtake. And Ferraris have always been fast, though. They've always been good on the straightaways. Yeah. yeah. Monza's, also... Monza's Ferrari's home turf, and they're usually pretty yeah. good there. So, if it's speed. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We've already got it. Wow. Jeez. Uh, I one, will baby. predict that Haas scores points again. I think. That's Magnuson. my that's my big prediction. Magnuson. Haas will score again. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Haas and, will get points. So that's a good one. I don't know if McLaren is going to get higher than P15. Okay. I think both Lando we'll and, and Ricky. Ricky end up in the back again, sadly. I just think Mercedes didn't do right on the engine. They yeah. just they haven't we'll executed. See. We will see, man. Anyways, spicy, transitioning spicy. from spicy race. some some race cars to some video games. Some, We've played these tracks Grand online. Theft auto cars. Mm. We've played these tracks online, but we've never committed grand theft, and I don't see us doing it for much longer. Wah, wah, wah. Rockstar. <laughs> What the fuck, guys? Chew down. Rockstar this past week announced a new premium subscription service. You. Because we need that. Right. To GTA Online, the game that came out in 2013, yep. almost 10 years old, yep. getting a premium subscription service exclusively to PS5 and Xbox Series X and S called GTA Plus. Um, what? It'll cost $5.99 per month. And it will include a wide range of members-only bonuses, including exclusive properties, vehicles, upgrades, discounts, and cash RP bonuses. Here's some of the things that it includes off-rip. $500,000 available to withdraw from your Maze Bank account. So what they give, they give you everybody a every month. Well, actually, they give you a million dollars for PlayStation Plus subscribers only. So now you get one point five. Don't you need PlayStation Plus, though, to play gta online yeah yes. but so, i mean it's not just playstation it's, it's also xbox, xbox and too. pc yeah. uh the principe deviste 8 which is a supercar whatever uh, and the auto shop property located in la mesa waived mm. ls car meet membership fees yacht owners can upgrade to the aquarius super yacht at no additional cost the gusset frog tee and broker prolapse basketball top and shorts 
The Three conveyor bolts. livery uh, for several vehicles, a selection of free paints and emblems, three times GTA cash and RP on Hal Special Works Race Series, and two times car meet rep on the Street Race Series. Um, additionally, GTA Plus members can purchase members only shark cards, which is basically Money. game currency yeah. that come with extra Ew. bonus cash. Ew. Ooh, that was weird. <laughs> oh, gosh. Fuck Rocks. you, Rockstar. Why are you doing this, huh? No one asked for this. I'll get you. And I look like a bloody accident. No one asked for this. We're we're really You're not pushing, Apple TV. We're really pushing the You're not the, Disney. Uh, the patience of consumers and what they will pay subscription services for. There's like a difference between like Final Fantasy fourteen having an online subscription to like play the game and have unlimited access for a month versus Paying six dollars a month to get some like cool clothes and a vehicle and some like some like half a million dollars, which is really like pennies in the GTA economy. You know what the difference is? What Final Fantasy fourteen is free, but you do pay thirteen dollars a month to play for thirty days. This is another month. Yeah, um, much like World of Warcraft, much like Guild Wars. Yeah, sure. What uh, do you mean? Listen. Now we can play the game. Listen, Rockstar. <laughs> GTA Online was fun while it lasted. We're done. We're you. This game has come out on three different generations. Just give us a new game. Yeah, a good new game, not a bad remake of old games. Can you please stop trying to milk us for every last drop? I honestly think this is the straw that will break GTA Online. I don't think. Do you think it's the straw that breaks Rockstar? No, 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 no. no. Yeah, well, well, They're trying like to bad... appeal to people who are already yeah. using microtransactions who don't who want to save money because they're spending mm -hmm. twenty dollars on their shark card and and another random twenty on yeah. their properties or whatever the hell they want to upgrade for yeah. themselves. But like much like the gold bars and Red Dead Redemption Online. Yeah. Well, no I one, think I'm... Please. I think bad trilogy remakes and premium subscriptions aside, it's not enough to to break the fact that Rockstar releases good games and they've do? yeah they do uh, well, so there's no dispute before before red like other than red dead redemption 2 and grand theft auto bully midnight club how long ago was bully and midnight club though? those are still good games yeah. they were releasing I mean, good games up until post red dead 2 when they started yeah. focusing on their online economy and milking us for microtransactions what was that noir game la noir, noir? Yeah. that was also a pretty good game yeah i my thought is just that i think a lot of consumers are more ready to remember recents than throwbacks, especially when you give them throwbacks that are terrible. Well, they're not give they're not putting out bad games. GTA trilogy was broken. Yes, that's one. It's okay. one bad game. Work. Name another bad Rockstar game. Well, technically, it was my opinion, Red Dead Redemption too. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That is controversial. Can you that please is. elaborate? Elaborate. And now this topic will take more than ten minutes. Yeah, Please elaborate. I mean, there's a there's a there's a forty minute video essay that uh, Jeremy showed me about this. But um, Red Dead on Red Dead Two, while phenomenally beautiful with a great map and great gameplay, has a story that attempts to make you believe that you're in control while railroading you through exactly what it wants you to do. It's like, oh, break, like Hogwarts Legacy. break into this mm -hmm. warehouse, but don't go up to that window and don't use a sniper but and don't the, do this but and the, don't do that. The argument in that video is not that that's what makes it a bad game, is that that's what makes it an outdated game. And an outdated game could still be good. It was good. Okay. Then I will say Red Dead Redemption 2 was good but outdated. And if I'm going to say the next Rockstar game is good, it better not be outdated. And these practices make me think that it will feel outdated. This does not give me faith for Rockstar. This no, makes me go, okay, the next Rockstar game that comes out, whenever that's going to be, I'm going to have to have reservations about. Versus when GTA Five came out, and I was like, GTA Five, Buying it, day one. Yeah. I have to play that. Versus yeah. now I'm like, oh, Rockstar is going to release more games? I hope they work. Oh, CD Projekt Red's releasing another game? I hope it works. Mm. Well... All in all, this isn't something that we needed or wanted, Rockstar. No one asked for this. We would love it if you could use your time, money, and resources to put together a game that we actually like and want, like GTA 6, which we've been waiting for for over 10 years. 
So it'd be nice. Or to... literally any else i trust you give to, us a new game i trust you to give me a new game i would love something new remember that that agent game that you were gonna come out long long ago rockstar and spies like i'm i'm here I for mean, it yeah. i don't think it's ever gonna come out but like that would be cool give us another midnight club i'll fucking race like just give us something do better stop, rockstar do better. stop milking gt online we're tired of it i think it's a symptom of our keeps are dry uh, the gaming industry moving, and this is something we talked about with Square Enix, mm -hmm. um, moving away from uh, players who play to players who work. That it's the idea of like game companies are starting to design games around the idea of log in, do your daily challenges, go over here, collect your thing, go to here, go to here. Sounds like Spend Animal your... Crossing. Yeah. yeah, they want to continue to make. It's mobile gaming. They want to continue like... to make their investment, Keep which is playing. why. Microtransactions. Keep paying, keep microtransactions are good for developers, but bad for consumers. Yeah, they're because very bad for. They're the, dangerous. And they're dangerous. You because know? you're especially putting, when when uh, uh, advertised towards a, a younger audience. Advertised toward a younger with audience. Access to their mother's credit cards. And also, just like as as much as there are going to be people who are like, well, it's their own fault. Like people who have gambling addictions. When the first thing that pops up when you log into GTA Online or Red Dead Two is like. Give us five dollars for this car. It's like you could even spend ten dollars and get double the amount of gold. Oh, or you could enter this slot machine and possibly yeah, there's win. Literal slot, slot machines, machines in yeah, Grand Theft Auto now. There's They're a whole casinos. casino now. Yeah, I know. So so dumb. Yeah, it's it's designed to get gambling addicts addicted to their game, the game, and to giving them money over and over. And it's not cool. That's right. Do better, Rockstar. Do better. In other news. Yeah, you know what's uh, you know what's not. Ew. You know what's quite. You know what's very uh. I'm so excited. The fact that uh, our boy, our boy. Oh, no, don't play dumb, you. Our boy Logan Riley Bruner will be shut up. Will be starring in the next season of Stranger Things. That's right, folks. You heard it here first. Logan Riley Bruner is going to be in the next season of Stranger Things. We've been waiting to talk about this. Two years. I don't want to say, I don't want to be like, Logan, what can you tell us? But Logan, what can you what tell can us? You well, tell us that what can you tell That doesn't completely violate any sort of contract. I can tell you absolutely nothing. Can, tell us your character's name. Uh, I play Fred Benson. Okay, what's he like? Fred is a journalist okay. who might get in a little over his head. Okay. That's everything that's been publicly revealed so far that I'm allowed to talk about. Great. In a little bit over his head. I, met, I can't wait to see the little journalist that you are. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that... Uh, Yes, I can talk about this. Uh, I worked with the Duffer Brothers. Yeah. Exclusive scoop! Who are incredible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two of the kindest, most hardworking, passionate directors I've gotten the chance to work with. I'm so jealous. Every day, Matt would come in with a different playlist. And so I'd ask him, like, oh, what's today's sound? Nice. He'd be like, Nightmare on Elm Street. And I was like, oh, what's today's? He'd be like, Halloween 2. It's like, ooh. Okay, let me listen. Let me get in the zone. Let me feel what you're... Let me get on your... Where are you which in? Is, yeah. Which is interesting because uh, in the last like photo dump that they gave us it was giving very horror movie vibes yeah, well they, that's what they're saying they can't do the goonies anymore because they're not working with kids anymore now these they're are teenagers adults. yeah or, and uh sean yeah. levy uh the executive producer was talking about the fact that this is much more nightmare on elm street than mm, goonies. no uh, wonder they came in with the playlist yeah! very, um, cool, very cool uh <laughs> i worked with incredible people there has been a lot of talk I remember when Maya Hawke got added to the cast last season, she talked about the fact that the entire cast is really like, it is a family. It is very much like bonding and super close and super tight. And mm. that's absolutely true. They're all incredibly kind. There's not an ego. Like no one's walking on set being like, Oh, well, I've been here for four seasons. So fuck you guys. It was like, everybody was super I wouldn't chill. expect that there would be. <laughs> I mean, you, this industry always surprises me where you find people that are like, Oh, you're a, Dick fuck. Oh, or like the complete opposite where people are so suave on screen and then they're big nerds off on off the camera. Yeah. I saw a hilarious Soren sent me a hilarious TikTok about, about Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. <laughs> it's not true. I mean it's just Simon Pegg being or, hilarious. Uh, there's probably but, some yeah. truth to it. All jokes have a little bit of truth to it. I believe that Benedict is a little nerdy off 
Five. Off screen, okay. I think maybe, he is, but I'm I I've seen. He's the not the caric no. caricature that he does. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> um, yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun. I'm super excited that I can finally talk about it. Confirmed by the Hollywood Reporter. Finally sure. official. Thanks, HR. We missed the announcement we by missed... two days. Yeah, because we saw. I remember. I was like looking at the pictures, and I was yeah. like, "Ah, no pictures." Yeah. <laughs> what are we? Yeah, doing? I, I, yeah. That's me too. I saw the pictures, and I was like, "Well, long as not in any of these." So, uh... <laughs> I guess not. Um. Yeah. It's okay. You did the same thing. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I looked at the pictures and was like, "I'm not in these." I guess they're not announcing me yet. And then just scrolled a little further down. It was like two days later. And yeah. Like, hey, <laughs> listen. Stranger Things season four doesn't come out until May 27th. There's still plenty. Of promotional season to Two go Two months through. from yeah. tomorrow. You could very much be in a trailer, my friend. Uh, you, you there, is, actually... there are rumors that there might be a trailer coming out tomorrow. Oh, <gasps> dope, on my birthday? On your, on your birthday. birthday! You know, two I'm months so until excited. the premiere. Oh, exactly two, two months. months before yeah. the premiere. Yeah. That'd be dope. Because the past couple days, and I noticed it recently because I'm a marketing major from mm. college, um, that the account had been really quiet for Thank you. The account had been really quiet for a while, and then all of a sudden it was like, check out this fan-made edit. Check out this yeah, like right. recap of, check out this, and yeah. then the photos dropped. And got I was it. like, oh, you're getting back in the algorithm. Nice. You're making sure that like you've got the heat on you so that when the trailer comes out, it's like, boom, immediately first thing people see on their page because they've already been liking yeah. Stranger Things for the past like, two weeks. Yeah. So also, we'll Go back and check out all of those trailers that they dropped, even the teasers, because you might see Logan in a frame. Just I mean, one, Reddit, like, Reddit's been talking about it, and I can't confirm if that's me or not, but Reddit has been talking about the frame. I know what my friend looks like from the back, Logan. <laughs> that sounded sus, but it's not. <laughs> um, and... Uh, <laughs> 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 I, know, I know what my friend looks like from the back and I, I, I could tell which one was you Logan I saw okay. ya I, I saw ya this, if you think so I say this as one of your best friends yeah I hope you die <laughs> thank you I hope you die you are not the first person to tell me hashtag that. save Fred baby let's get it trending already I hope the best for Fred I want oh, to yeah, see him too. next season in part 2 in, in, in season 5 Stranger Things 5 yeah is that even going to be a thing uh, yeah, season five's been confirmed. Two more seasons left, I believe. <laughs> Close to the end. Very close. Very exciting. I love stuff. it when a creator knows when to end. There is show. one more thing that I can talk about in terms of this announcement, which mm -hmm. is something that I think Jacob knows, but I don't know if I've ever told you this story. <gasps> Breaking uh, news, guys! Again. Uh, four years ago, actually more like six at this point. Wow. Um, I got uh, an audition across my desk for a show called Montauk, that ended up being. Stranger Things. And I first auditioned for Jonathan Byers. Oh, wow. Wow. So full circle. Full circle. Full, full sure, circle. Sure. I remember reading that pilot and being like, wow, this show is going to be so good. Man, I hope I get to be on it. Yeah. Well, you're not on Years Montauk. Later. You're here on Stranger Things. Hawkins in High. Hawkins, Hawkins High, High School. Baby, class of 83 or whatever. Me? Not Fucking ha. Cool. See if Fred gets to graduate. Yeah, please. <laughs> a little journalist. So yeah, uh, that's a thing. It's happening. We're very excited. We've been sitting on it for a while. Um, you can probably go back to some past podcasts where we talked about uh, Stranger Things and some facial expressions that I was making. will make a lot more sense now. <laughs> Speaking of things that are strange, oh. things that and, are spooky. But making you know, a lot more sense now. But making a lot more sense now. Got cameo in the Batman. Spoiler alert! Wah, wah, wah. Big spoiler alert. Guys, for a deleted scene from the Batman. Ready? Matt Reeves, this past week, dropped a deleted scene from the Batman, which features our unnamed Arkham... Prisoner? Prisoner, a.k.a. the Joker. And the scene was very... Interesting. Yeah. I loved it. Yes. I understand why it was cut, and I totally respect Matt Reeves for making that call. And I'm also glad that he decided to release the scene. Me too. After, so we could see it. Yeah. So that we could see this incredible portrayal of the Ugh, Joker Barry that Keegan Barry just... Keegan's doing. Ugh. Holy crap. Yeah. So good. That prosthetic work. Yeah. I mean, first of all, the makeup all over from yeah. his hands to his Face, mouth. Like, to, his, to his hair, the hair 
like like burnt, pulled out. Like yeah. this this Joker's been through some shit. Oh yeah, but also seems young enough yeah. to like new. Yeah, fresh. and that and that's what's scary that he's young and you can already tell he's already been through the ringer like over and over again. <laughs> he's like a, a, a veteran. They're keeping him next to Riddler in Arkham Asylum, so clearly he's incredibly yeah. dangerous. I talked yeah. about this in the spoiler cast, but the basic premise is that Batman is kind of stumped on the messages that Riddler is sending him, so he wants to get in the mind of another psychopath, and he goes sees uh, the Joker, who it's indicated that he has uh, that he already has experience with. He goes into the prison, and Joker's like first year anniversary it's paper he's like i'm not that cheap (laughs) like like i didn't know you were that cheap batman and yeah it is very silent to the lambs vibe before like a year ago he 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 put him in he put him away yeah put him in there and the joker kind of just revenge the joker just kind of spells out riddler's plan the riddler's plan which which is which is motives yeah which I really appreciate, and it's why I understand why it wasn't in the movie. Yeah, because the, the same, audience should be doing that. But at the same time, I also kind of wish it was in the movie so that we could be like, wow, the Joker was right. I also, I'm, I'm glad that he wasn't in there because, like, if there had been too much Joker in that movie, it might have come across as, like, a little it cliche. It would have detracted, I think, from, yeah, from, from the, story they're the trying effect to tell. of the Riddler. I felt like having the Joker in it period kind of already takes away because yeah. now like everyone's like the joker the joker the joker know, and now, you know that. but yeah i appreciate that the scene is out there uh something i saw on tiktok uh tiktok is just a source of easter eggs um when batman hands joker the file there are three, three. paper clips on the file and when the joker returns it there are only two so is joker planning an escape or a murder Always. or a, yeah what can Joker do with a paperclip? I hope there's a scene in the movie, in the next movie. He can kill Selena Kyle. He can kill a lot of people. <laughs> he could. He's going to hold on to that paperclip, and then, like, right when shit's about to go down, he's going to take it out. And go, <gasps> yeah. He's going to come closer. Shing! It's not going to happen until, like, the third movie. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Remember that paperclip? Oh! <sighs> For the diehards. I think, like what you were saying, the, the difference between it being in and it being cut, I think with it in the movie... The Joker becomes established as like, this is Batman's rival. Riddler is just like a secondary villain that Batman's got to deal with. But it almost this diminishes is his... the Riddler's. Um... I think by including him as a cameo and having him be like, I'm so proud of you. We're going to do great things together. It sets up that partnership that yeah. Riddler and Joker have had in the comic books. Where and the two will of have them, in this universe. Where yeah. the two of them have been like really like tight friends who like lean on each other rather than oh it's Joker and Riddler. Yeah. I want like Joker and Riddler. These are two psychopaths that can both do serious yeah. damage. So oh, if yeah. we get to a point that it's like you can either rescue Selina or you can stop Riddler, it's like oh fuck. Yeah. It's not like or we stop were... Gotham from freezing. Yeah, it's not mm-hmm. 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 Freeze. Um, well, me- meanwhile, Hush is trying to Hush, Hush is wearing Batman's face and murdering people, uh, or Bruce Wayne's Bruce face. Bruce Wayne's face. <laughs> and then, so we we now have possibilities in the new movie of Hush, Mister Freeze, Penguin, Two Face, Harley Quinn, and the Joker. Wow, oh. Harley Quinn. Uh, people have been talking about just casting rumors for Harley Quinn. Oh, and uh, oh cool. uh, yeah. I hope not. I think let's 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 let let's let Cap. Let's let Selena Kyle become Catwoman. Yeah, I think I think before we introduce for me personally, Harley I think Quinn. the next movie I would like to see Hush and Penguin as a secondary character for sure. Maybe Mister Freeze. I feel like having Hush and Mister Freeze might be too much for one movie. Might. Um, Although there were three baddies in this first one. That's true, but there was like four. one main there were kind of four. There was like one main baddie, like Joker aside. There was like yeah. the Riddler. And then, like, Penguin and Falcon. Yeah. So, like, for the next one, I want it to be, like, like, Hush and Mr. Freeze are both, like, two pretty big villainous characters. So, I don't, like, you know, it's, like, um, unless unless we we do the thing that we talked about in the spoiler cast, which is, like, Mr. Freeze kind of starts off as a hero, and then we defeat Hush, and then he turns. Yeah. It was Um, for my daughter. Or my wife. wife. My wife. My wife. The rumor currently is that 
Miss Anya Taylor Joy is in talks oh. to play Harley Quinn. The rumor is always <laughs> Anya Taylor Joy is doing something great. <laughs> it's been true quite a few times. Yeah. We so you know. See. Yeah. Oh, what's the word? I'm so excited. No matter what happens. No yeah. matter what happens. That's right. From deleted scenes to released movies, we go for movies. Of the week. Whoa. I really hope the podcast picked that up because that was perfect. <laughs> that was a kind of spooky. Yeah, uh, the movie. We're talking about the Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know it was going to rain. I didn't. I, I mean, I thought was, it was going to rain at noon, but like. I didn't realize it was going to be like that. That sounded like a thunderstorm. Yeah. Cool. Oh, Jeez. We All right. To, we might have to order some DoorDash rather than going out for lunch today. Maybe. Logan. Movies. Movies? Coming out this week. Uh, movies. Coming out this week. You're not just wrong, you're stupid. Plus one that we missed last week. And it was one that I was actually really excited for. I we had talked about it even, so many times. <laughs> didn't even think about it. It was crazy. Um, so to catch up from the fabulous A24 a company that we love very, very much, uh, comes everything or came because it is uh, already out. It's out. That's, uh, and that's us living in the present. Yes. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, this movie stars Michelle Yeoh uh, and Michelle Yeoh and Michelle Yeoh uh, alongside Michelle Yeoh and introducing Michelle Yeoh. Uh, the movie was directed and written by Dan Kwan and Daniel Scheinart, who uh, both worked together on Swiss Army Man, which I still have yet to see, but I've heard is absolutely fantastic. Same. Um, and it's a multiverse non-Marvel movie. Yeah, I'm, I mean, the multiverse is just kind of becoming a, a popular topic. You yeah, know? trending we all, theme. We all, we all want to live in a universe that doesn't have... Limits. Bovid shine team, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so alternate timeline, let's yeah. everyone do it. Marvel, DC, DC, A24. DC's already doing it with their upcoming Flash movie. I know, so that's why I said it. Yeah. But this versus, uh... Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness or Flash, where Flash or Doctor Strange are moving to a new universe. This is uh, Michelle Yeoh's character gets a device that allows her to borrow elements and consciousness from other universes. That seems dope. So, like, I'm in a knife fight, I know how to use knives now. Nice. I'm in a car chase, I know how to drive this car. Sounds a little Matrixy, sounds a little Sensei. Plug it in, yeah, and yeah. let it go. Like, now I'm in a universe where I have hot dogs for fingers. Or like, mm. I now know how to like nice. use like these cooking tools or this whatever. Or... Cool. Looks yeah. super cool. It looks super cool and super exciting. Yeah. And the two directors are just really. Good I want to see this movie roles. in IMAX. I had no idea it was coming out in IMAX, and. I mean, what just is on the, big screen? the visual presentation of the trailer is like, yeah, yes, 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 and yes. I'm here for it. And I'm here for this all Korean cast. Yeah. Not all Korean. Jane Lynch is in it. Not Jane Lynch. Uh, Freaky Friday. She plays the mom. Oh. Jamie, Lee Jamie, Lee Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Uh, but a mostly Korean cast. I'm excited for it. It looks like a really good movie. Yes. Uh, and it looks like a lot of fun, so go check that out. Uh, now, we're moving to movies that are coming out this week. Uh, this list is semi-long, so as usual, I'm going to tell you to put that timer on 1.5 or 2 times speed so that you can get through this section quickly. Ready? Go. Uh, first up for this week, we have a limited release by IFC, so unless you have an IFC theater in your town, you're probably not going to be able to see this one, unfortunately. This one comes out Wednesday, March 30th, so in a couple days for us, but tomorrow for you all. Uh, this is based on a true story. Uh, they don't, not a lot of people listen you, and like on a day one, accident. you know? Well, I'm hopeful that people will. People got to catch up, you know? All right. Well, like Wednesday, me, March 30th. We said the date. <laughs> uh, based on a true story, uh, Nitram tells the story of a character named Nitram, who is based on a real person uh, who perpetrated the 1996 Port Arthur massacre in Tasmania, Australia. Uh, the movie has been incredibly controversial, uh, especially in Tasmania, with most of uh, the the town uh, wanting to forget this awful atrocity that happened. Um, but the movie has been getting heavy praise for how dark and intense and scary it is. Metal Gear Solid director Hideo Kojima very much enjoyed this movie. Hmm. Uh, this movie stars Caleb Landry-Jones, who won the 2020 Cannes Best Actor Prize. 
uh, Judy Davis, Essie Davis, and Anthony Lepoglis. Directed by Justin Kurzel, who directed The Snowtown Murders, uh, the 2015 version of Macbeth, uh, and the mm. Assassin's Creed movie, and written by Sean Grant, who wrote Snowtown Murders with Kurzel. Um, this looks creepy and dark. If you've seen Get Out, you know Caleb Landry Jones's work. He is very good at playing very scary men, mm -hmm. and it looks like he has that down to a T. Um, so check this out if you're interested, if you're in a, like, extremely vile and wicked mood, that kind of, like, let's examine serial killers and why they do what they do, um, this might be a movie for you. Moving right along from HBO Max, we have Moonshot coming out Thursday, March 31st. Uh, this is a, a rom, uh, I'd call it a romance rom movie. I don't want to call it a rom, rom drum. Yeah, that sounds more right. Um, Sci-fi rom drum. Sci-fi rom drum. Um, about a woman who uh, is in a long-distance relationship with her boyfriend who lives on Mars. Long. Uh, she meets this barista at a coffee shop who she really hits it off with. Uh, but she announces that she's going to join her boyfriend on Mars, so she'll never see him again until he sneaks onto her ship to <gasps> join her for the journey. There's not enough rations for all those people. He's always dreamed of going to space. Same. The movie stars Lana Condor and Cole Sprouse as the, the two main characters, uh, alongside Zach Braff, Michelle Buteau, Mason Gooding, and Lucas Gage. Uh, it is directed by Christopher Winterbauer and written by Max Taxi, who is a first-time screenwriter, probably not actually a first-time screenwriter, but first time being produced. Uh, most screenwriters, the first time they're produced is like their 15th script. So um, congratulations for getting your first film produced. This movie looks super cute. It looks like one of those like, oh, she's in love with this guy, but the guy of her dreams has been with her all along. Um, so you already know how the movie's gonna end. I'm gonna predict it, though. The two of them are gonna end up together, Cole and Lana, and, uh, we'll see if I'm right. Next up, uh, all of the other movies that are releasing this week are coming out on Friday, April 1st. Not an April Fool's joke. They are actually coming out. Uh, I so... Know, it's always weird when it's like, this movie's coming out April, April 1st. April 1st, you're like, like is, is it? it? Yeah. That's why Friday movie day is so weird. You can never, like, predict or the even, exact Or even, that's like with that. anything. Like, someone's, like, dropping you music on April 1st. I'm like, are you? Are I you dropping kidding. a song or a joke? <laughs> we have tough. we have three movies that are releasing nationwide on Friday. So three movies that uh, everyone around the United States and hopefully people around the world, if you're able to see them, can see. First up, we have Morbius, which is our superhero movie of the week. Uh, Dr. Michael Morbius uh, is going to try and cure himself of a rare blood disease, but oh no, he turns himself into a vampire. Michael! Uh, this is coming from the Sony version of the MCU, so that's our Venom side, that's our uh, Spider-Man, Spider -Man, but Spider-Man's kind of in the MCU, but it's also Sony. Sony. Um, so we're kind of feeling that out. We've got Michael Keaton reprising his role from uh, Homecoming. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. But then we also have a couple images from, like, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. Spider-Man universe are what we in, What universe are we in? You better make this shit work. Uh, Michael Morbius is being played by Jared Leto. And this movie also features Michael Keaton, Adria Arjona. Arjona? Arjona. Arjona, thank you. Uh, Adria Arjona, Jared Harris, Matt Smith, and Tyrese Gibson. Uh, it's directed by Danielle Espinoza, who directed the movies Life and Safe House. Uh, and written by Matt Sazama and Burke Sharpless, who wrote Lost in Space, the series together, uh, and the movie Gods of Egypt, based on a comic oh, yeah. by Roy Thomas and Gil Kane. Um, we will see how this one goes. I'm always a little curious about Sonyverse movies. We liked Venom 2 more than we liked Venom 1. Yeah. And you liked sorry. Venom 1. Oh. No, I, I I didn't like the first Venom, and that's why I didn't see, see Venom the second 2, Venom. which, according to you guys, was better. better I actually. didn't see the first Venom, which but, I think is why I liked the second Venom. Because I remember turning on the first Venom after I'd seen Venom 2 and being like, oh, this is a drama. Because Venom 2 is very comedic. It's yeah. very There's some like, comedy in the first Venom. Okay. But, but... But it's a lot, it's a lot it's more, a lot more second, like sure. dark, yeah. like Venom is a, uh, a monster who he's trying to control versus 2 is like their buddy. It's a buddy cop movie, but yeah, one of the cops is an alien who can hop yeah. different bodies. How do we feel about Morbius? Are we excited? I'm, I'm intrigued, hesitant. I'm but, very hesitant. but, and I hate to say this, Jared Leto and superheroes don't mix that well. You took the words right out of my mouth. 
Uh, we'll see. Following Suicide Squad, I am worried about Jared Leto and superheroes, but this does look a little closer to his wheelhouse. Less, I'm a crazy guy, and more like serious doctor who's dealing with an ever-growing situation. It's a more rooted character, yes. for sure. Mm -hmm. We'll see. So I'm oh. interested. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure about this one. I don't know. I, I have no idea what to expect, but I, I want to see it. I don't even have, like, middling expectations for Ooh, this. Wow. Honest, so Hot I, take. I don't think it's going to be good. Okay. Latino Shay, no pick on the name. <laughs> uh, moving right along. Uh, also coming out nationwide from Paramount on Friday, April 1st, uh, we have The Contractor, uh, which stars Chris Pine as a soldier who's discharged from the army and on the brink of financial collapse uh, before joining a spec ops unit that is not what it appears. It looks like uh, one of those soldier movies where uh, the guy joins the spec ops unit, but oh no, he's not actually working for the government. He's working for an evil corporation who wants to kill people who are trying to save the world and he has to turn on them and save the people you know extraction mm -hmm. there's there's a couple movies that have come out like this sounds um, interesting they're fun they're fun uh it stars chris pine and features jillian jacobs Kiefer sutherland and ben foster uh directed by Tariq saleh and written by jp davis uh this one looks like an action time if you're looking for guns and chris pine jumping off bridges and <sighs> explosions uh go see the contractor our final nationwide release of this week comes to us from focus features it first appeared at sundance you won't be alone i've heard about this uh yes it Sounds looks spooky it yeah it looks super spooky it's uh and i didn't write the description here because i'm silly um but it's a witch abduction mixed with like possession movie it's like a witch kidnaps this girl. A young girl is kidnapped and then transformed into a witch by an ancient... Sp oh, wait a minute. Oh, I have seen ads for this. Oh, this one looks really cool and beautifully shot. Yes. Uh, this girl's kidnapped by a spirit, as Jeremy said, uh, but she becomes multiple different people as her life progresses. So part of the, the end of the trailer is her saying, they'll bury my body, but as a witch, I will live on. Very interesting um, stuff. And so the idea of, like, she moves into different people. Starring Sarah Klimoska, Anna Maria Marinka, Alice Englert, Felix Marteau, Carlotto Cota, and Numi Rapaz. The actress who we have all been mispronouncing her name as Naomi Rapis. Uh, There's no A in her name. pronounce the name. It's two O's. <laughs> I was making that mistake, too. Uh, this movie is directed and written by Goran Stolevsky. Uh, which is his feature directorial debut. Congratulations. Yeah, I... uh, this is not an English film. Uh, no. You will have to read, but it <laughs> does look incredibly creepy. It looks... It, it doesn't look scary, so I, I don't think... I think Jacob would more consider it a thriller than a horror, but it definitely looks horror in tone, mm -hmm. in terms of like slow burn the witch yeah very much i think i think vibes. one of the quotes is like the best horror movie since the witch nice so uh that one could be a lot of fun so make sure that you check that out uh we're now gonna move to streaming our streaming movies of the week we have two of them this week first up uh listen if you're looking for a movie for the family this one's gonna be for you <laughs> better nate than ever uh based on the book of the same name coming to disney plus uh, about a young man who wants to be a Broadway star, so he runs to New York City to pursue his dreams. Um, I'm. And then what? Uh, you have to watch the movie to find out. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, it's starring Ruby Wood, who uh, this is his first on screen credit. Um, he was picked from a nationwide search, uh, much like uh, Rachel Ziegler. Ziegler? Segler. Segler? Segler. Rachel Segler uh, for West Side Story. Um, he was Charlie in the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory National Tour, so he's got that Broadway experience, so clearly he's got some talent. Mm -hmm. Uh, the reason this one popped up for me, because I was watching the trailer and I was like, this just looks silly, was I was like, oh wait, no, the, the dance numbers and the songs look fun. Like, they look well choreographed. It does it looks look like, cute. It looks cute. It looks like the kind of movie I would have watched when I was in, like, middle school and been like, this is really fun. I really like this. When I was really into musical theater, mm -hmm. 
So I think that this is going to be one for the family. This movie is directed and written by Tim Federley, uh, who created High School Musical The Musical. This is his first time as a feature director as well. Uh, the only other thing he's directed is the High School Musical The Musical Holiday Special. Uh, so this is his first full-length movie, so congratulations to you as well. Jeremy, do you want to take us through our Netflix movie? Because you sure. talked about it two weeks ago. I did talk about it two weeks ago. Coming to Netflix, The Bubble, starring... Karen Gilliam, Pedro Pascal, Leslie Mann, Fred Armisen, Keegle Michael Key, David Duchovny, Iris Apatow, and Guz Khan, and featuring Kate McKinnon, a lot of funny people on the cast. Truly. Really? Uh, a group of actors go to a closed set during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and try and make a movie in the bubble. They're not allowed to leave. Nice. The company depends on it. Uh, directed by Judd Apatow and also written by Judd Apatow and Pam Brady. Um, is this together or is this just Pam Brady's That's just Pam. credit? Pam Brady uh, also helped write Hot Rod and the South Park movie, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Uncut. I love the South Park movie, so I might like the bubble. I'm going to check this out because who doesn't need a good laugh? I'm intrigued. Uh, I'm hopeful that it is a good Judd Apatow movie. I am hopeful that it's a movie that just makes me laugh. Love that. That's all yeah. I need from it. Uh, we've got a couple more. These are limited. These are going to be harder to see, so I apologize if you're not able to catch them yet, but uh, we will keep you informed on if they show up to streaming services. And try and find them if you can. Yeah, there's oh, there hopefully is a local cinema in your town. Um, fingers crossed. But if you can find these, we've got three more movies for you. First up, we have Boone, which is... Uh, sorry, I just... My brain short-circuited for a second <laughs> uh boone is a limited release uh it is about it is a one-man army type movie um uh, giving me kind of john wick vibes mm. a man who lives secluded in a cabin must help a woman and her son after a criminal organization goes after them mm. uh this movie stars neil mcdonough mcdonough neil mcdonough tommy flanagan and christina ochoa um it's directed by Derek Presley and written by Derek Presley and Neil McDonough. Uh, Neil McDonough is one of those actors that if you look him up on IMDb, you'll be like, oh, that guy. He always kind of plays an asshole, but in this movie, mm -hmm. he seems to be playing a hero. It's nice to see uh, an actor, one, writing their own work, uh, and two, getting to like, I know this play asshole. a new character, uh, do something interesting. It's giving me very like... Oh, I do know this asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it gives me John Wick vibes, as I said. It gives me that feeling of like, oh, we're gonna... That guy that lives in the cabin? Yeah, we'll take him out. Oh, no. He's he's that old mercenary that we haven't seen in years. And then that happens. Um, so check that one out, if that's what you're into. Uh, coming from Neon, who uh, tend to distribute pretty good movies. Them and A24 are really like... True that. Super interesting when it comes to the films that they pick. We have Memoria, which premiered at Cannes, uh, winning the jury prize, uh, which is a, a, an exclusive club. Sorry, Jacob. Uh, uh, this movie looks weird. Um, it's about a woman who starts hearing sounds and starts to think about what they... <laughs> I can't. Why don't you apologize to Jacob? <laughs> because every time I burp, Jacob makes a comment. Jacob always goes, Logan burps during the movies of the week section. Uh -huh, and that yeah. was my, like... That was your burp. Yeah. I had hidden a couple of them that I was like, okay, Jacob didn't catch that one. And the, yeah. that was right in the middle of the sentence. So I was you don't like, have to Fuck. apologize for them. I'm just pointing out that you burp every time. I do. I, I, I yeah, shot down drinking a soda pop. during a fucking podcast. Drink some water. I was only burping. Craving. I was only burping last week because of the fucking beers we were chugging. Mm -hmm. You had a whole burp count. It was very fun. I don't even know how many we hit. Five, five or six. I think four, 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 four. four. five. Uh, anyway, that tangent aside, um, Memoria is starring Tilda Swinton, uh, and it's a movie about a woman who starts hearing sounds while on a trip to a sorry a Scottish woman on a trip to Colombia who begins hearing sounds and starts to question what they mean. Mm. Uh, I watched the trailer and had absolutely no idea what the movie was about. But then I started looking up reviews about it, especially since it was the winner of the jury prize. That really caught my attention. Um, and a lot of the reviews are talking about how it's a movie really about, like, 
what memories start to represent and how different sounds trigger those memories oh. and what they mean once people are gone. I like that. That, like, when you hear a sound and it reminds you of a person, but that person's passed away, like, what does that all do? Um, well, it preserves their memory. Yeah, so yeah. it looks super interesting. It's <laughs> written and directed by Apichat Ong Verasi Takul. Yes, uh, who's a director from Bangkok. Um, yeah. uh, it looks Logan, like you're incredibly... randomly crying. <laughs> <laughs> I what made you cry there, bud? I don't know, man. I, was just, I got really emotional about the fact that a director from Bangkok is getting the chance to direct a feature film that's getting some play in America. It really means a lot to me. There's a whole section we cut out. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> um, uh, this movie looks really beautiful. It does. It looks like a gorgeous movie, and I definitely wanted to shout it out, so I'm super excited about it. Right, right. And who, who wrote it and directed it again? <laughs> yeah, uh, you said it earlier, Jacob. I did, uh, I know, but I forget. <laughs> Do you really, or are you just trying to get me to say the name wrong? Uh, no. <laughs> All right, let's, let's move on. I don't know how to pronounce names well. It's a, it, it's a comedy. Anyway. Uh, finally, we have our one documentary of the week. Uh, also a limited release. This is a documentary about Duke Pawa Kach. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Dice in a row! Dice in a row! This documentary is about Duke Paua Kahanamoku, a five-time Olympic medalist from Hawaii who brought surfing to the world and saved lives while doing so. All right. The movie's called Waterman. Uh, it's narrated by Jason Momoa and directed by Isaac Halasima. Uh, it looks like a really cool movie. It's always interesting to see uh, stories about people that we haven't heard of, stories about people who are really legendary in their communities, but maybe haven't reached a more mainstream, I say mainstream, a white uh, Western Ooh. audience. Um, I mean... Good catch, but sad. Yeah. But that's the correction you had to make. That it's like, oh, this guy, this guy is not mainstream. It's like, well, he is if you follow surfing or if you're from Hawaii, but... And surfing's cool. Yeah, surfing is very cool. Uh, he brought surfing to the world uh, and saved lives while doing it. So... Amazing. It looks like a great movie. Uh, check it out if you're into surfing. Um, check it out if you're into the Olympics. Uh, those are the movies that are coming out this week. So be sure to check them out. Let us know if there's any that you're watching. There's actually a couple more. They're in the description below. Mm -hmm. Not on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Stop asking us about Google+. It's no never going to happen. No one's asking about Google+. And I don't think anyone ever has. So that line in every podcast always makes me go, hmm, why is he doing that? <laughs> it's a reference. To what? To uh, Ray William Johnson. Ray William Johnson. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. Didn't realize. Yeah. Okay. It used to be his thing. Okay. And I, I think was I, it ever our thing, though? I did it once. <laughs> I did it once I think we've done it 55 times. Yeah. Well, we haven't done movies of the week every episode. That's right. That's we why I said 55 and not 56. We still didn't start movies of the week. I know. Like whatever. Podcast 30. Come on, Jacob. Man, I gotta watch all of our podcasts again, I guess. I don't know that I could do that. No. I feel like I'd watch those first couple Zoom episodes and be like, come on. Guys, when are they gonna get in person? Do, um yeah those are the movies of the week we Shall were we really transition? flying by the seat of our pants in those early episodes oh my gosh yes we were <laughs> yeah we had fun yeah. but yeah um i'll start for the content content you're consuming, I'm, consuming. Yeah. I'm i'm playing uncharted 3 you are just i know through those games yeah i want to get to a thief's end the fourth one that was mm -hmm. actually made for the playstation 4 so well they upgraded for the 5 so oh well, well, well that doesn't matter for you five, so. um no, don't name it. Damn, son. I know, it's unfortunate. But you know. At I'm least, saving my money. I've got a working PS4. But at least I'm perfectly you have happy with Drake's it. Drake's fortune. Yeah, I'm working through Drake's fortune. Yep. It's going fine. Uh, uh fine. Mm. That's a glowing it's fine. There's a lot of melee. Interesting. Interesting. It's alright. It seems like two so far has been your favorite. I did like two better. You yeah. flew through two. Yeah, I did. I beat two in a day. Yeah. Wow. One, oh one it took you like a week and a half. Yeah. And then, and then two, two in one done. day. Yeah. And then three, it's been like a little uh, bit of time. Yeah. Four is fine. But I'm 60% done. Right. With three. Nice. Um, I, off of that Batman wave, as I've been going to bed, I've been turning on the animated series and oh, just nice. like turning it on low volume and just, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not gonna, I am not the night. I am Batman. Yeah. I am asleep. Bye. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, for however it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, blah, 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 blah. 
what else? We're watching Peacemaker still. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So good. Keep an eye on that. Do not skip that intro. That no. intro tells a story. And it changes. And it's a very interesting story. Yeah. Really cool stuff. Yeah. I still have to finish Book of Boba. Didn't finish that. I not finished it. I don't think I've I finished the first Servant. I still got to finish the that. And yeah. Um, I'm going to say that's it from me. We're hopefully watching a movie after this. We'll I'm rethinking that right now. No. I know. I it's know. the last movie we have to watch. I know, but I'm not even going to be watching the Oscars live. I'm not going to watch that. But we're going to talk about it. We next are going to talk about it, but like it's a three-hour movie, and it's like four o'clock, and like we haven't eaten, and we also we got to start watching Drive to Survive. We're all together, we and it, like to it came out. I feel like I'm behind. You know. True. I've seen, we'll see. I've seen like hints about clips from the show, so yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued as well, as well. We we could still watch the movie. It's just it's a long one. It's a long one. It is. All right, you. Uh, me. This yeah. person. Um, I finished inventing Anna. Uh, inventing Anna. Inventing Anna. Anna Delvey. Anna Delvey. Uh, they say Crazy both in the chick. show. Crazy white chick. Um, it was good. I recommend you watch it. It was not my favorite, but it was good. Shout out to Aryan Moyad. He, the final episode of the season, he gives an absolutely brilliant performance. Uh, shouts out there, go monologue Aryan. time. Seriously, there's a <laughs> lot know. of there's a lot of courtroom stuff in that last episode. Yeah, you I invented Anna. Did you watch? The Imagine. Show? Absolutely not. I haven't watched the link <laughs> of the show. I haven't even seen a trailer for it. Really? Really? Yeah. I know what it's about. Interesting. Right. I, don't have, I don't have ads on my YouTube. Interesting. So. Um, I'm not done yet. I said one thing. Um, Why are you rushing him, Jacob? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I have been playing Apex Legends and Elden Ring. Um, we watched Peacemaker together. Now I'm trying to think because I feel rushed. Um, I started watching the Amazon series Upload, uh, oh, yeah. which is now on season two. It. The first episode was much better than I expected it to be. It's a lot darker than thought it was going to be they really advertised it as a comedy and it does not feel like that oh and winning time the lakers oh, yeah. series on hbo is chef's kiss fabulous it is such a good show all the acting on that show is great uh episode three just came out uh and brought adrian brody into the cast oh, does i love a great that job. Guy. uh jillian jacobs who we talked about during movies of the week is also now on the show and she does a great job um yeah very good uh very very interesting to look at the Lakers. They have not played a single game of basketball. And we are on episode three. Hmm. So okay. it's not a basketball show. Preseason. It is, it is <laughs> a behind the scenes into like what it took to build this dynasty. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Very interesting. I like it a lot. I recommend you watch it. Um, I think that's it for me. I think that's it. Cool. I am currently up to date with season 14 of RuPaul's Drag Race. My goodness. Uh, this is the longest season ever with many twists and turns along the way, but these queens are so talented. I have no idea who's going to be in the top three. Nice. It's really anyone's game at this point, although, of course, I do have my favorites. Willow Pill, Lady Camden. I love you too. Uh, I have been bumping this new Rosalia album, Moto Mami, one of the most. Not one. I don't want to say one of the most. Uh, very musically diverse album. Flamenco, reggaeton, pop ballads, a little bit of rapping. James Blake's a secret feature on it. Highly recommend it, even if you don't understand the language. It's The, the production is just out of this world. You never know where she's going to go next on the album. I love it. Nice. I haven't been playing as much video games lately. I don't know... What it is. Well, it's a game that we were really passionate about. Just, it's starting to get a little stale. I've just been doing... Uh, really? I've, been, I've been focusing on other things mm -hmm. besides gaming lately. Hmm. I feel like I watched West Side Story again with my dad because he hadn't seen it. Uh, West Side Story is also one of his favorite musicals. He's He introduced it to me. Did he like uh, it? He liked it. He thought Ansel was overacting. and I completely agreed with him. Totally. Uh, but he liked the changes that they made. Yeah. Interesting changes. Interesting changes for sure. Oh, we saw the uh, the Jujutsu Kaisen movie. We did. It was absolutely great. It was wonderful. Uh, I knew I was forgetting something. Reignited. I mean, it never really left, but it like reignited my passion for Jujutsu Kaisen. I think I want to start reading the manga because I don't want to wait for season two. Honestly, I'd watch that movie again with you. I think you'd have fun with it. 
Some it's of those fight, some of those fight scenes are really wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll Good see, shit. we'll see. Good shit. Great shit. Oh, my big daughter. Nice. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening or watching the Black Wolves Pack cast. It's been an honor to have you. Seriously. Uh, without further ado. No, no shout outs? Nothing? Um... No, no shout-outs. No. Uh, no. <laughs> we, had, we had some some nice comments on some of our videos, but nothing that was like a question or a, a like, hey, oh, talk about this. I will say I did get my purple hoodie from Only New York, my favorite brand. My question did get popped up. On it did get popped TikTok. up. I answered it, but it's not showing up. So, whatever. Whatever. Only New York. Nice. Good brand. Shout-out. 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 Shout out. Shout out. We'll That's be back it. next week yeah. to talk about these Oscar results. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what happens. And Saudi Arabia. And, and the Saudi Arabia GP. Yeah. 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 Let's see and happens. we'll see how my birthday went. Yeah. yeah. Um, you may a lot of stuff happening on the same about, day. You know? Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Cool. We'll see. Until then. Yeah, I'm Jacob Wade. I'm Logan Riley Bruner. I'm Jeremy Van Suarez. And that's all. Bye. See you. 52, 52, 52, 52. <laughs> <laughs>